Hi, my name is Daniel Westbrook. I'm a third generation master carpenter, and today I'm going to show you how to build a simple set of stairs. There's going to be three components I want to show you today that's universal. One is measuring your rise and your run and calculating those out. Two is why it's important to have the thickness of the treads cut off at the bottom of the stringer. And three, why it's important to have a drawing like this. So let's get started. It's really important to remember that your overall rise measurement is from finished material to finished material. Everything is based upon that when you're framing for stairs. So let me show you what I mean. What we happen to be using today is a five quarter uh, by four tight knot cedar decking. And this is going to be our finished deck surface. So simply just measure from finish to finish, finish patio to finish deck, and we've got 26 and 3 quarter. And so we're going to take our 26 and 3 quarter overall riser height, and we're going to divide that by an average single riser height. And I've just chosen that out of the air. I like to use 7. Some people like to use 7 and a half. But in any case, that's going to equal 3.82. 3.82 risers doesn't make any sense. You've either got to have 3 or you've got to have 4. In our case, we just round, we just round up to 4 risers. That's going to tell us that our riser height is going to be a little bit less than 7 inches, which actually is a really comfortable riser height. Then we're going to take our uh, 26 and 3 quarter and start to talk about our riser cut calculation. We take our total rise, which is 26 and 3 quarter, our original measurement from finish to finish material. We divide that by a total of four risers, and we end up with 6.68 uh, as a riser cut. And you can convert that to, well, it ends up being about 6 and 11 sixteenths. And that's our riser cut. So in this case, I've got a 3 quarter inch riser material, which I like to use on my decks. I got another three quarter inch riser material here. I've drawn out my six and 11 sixteenths riser cut. And I've also laid out this cedar decking, this five quarter cedar decking. The reason why we lay out our decking like this before we figure out our tread calculation is because there's so many different types of decking. I like to use three full pieces when I'm using a five quarter by four cedar decking because it avoids having to do any rips. It's a time saver. So what's also important to notice is that I have a gap between each of my decking pieces. It's basically a nail spacer that we use when we're framing, uh, when we're putting on cedar decking just like we've all done before. That gap allows us to have enough space to spread this out to where we want it. I also like to have a gap, by the way, at the fascia board because that allows moisture to go through. The total distance then becomes 11 and a quarter tread finish. I've also drawn a 3 quarter inch overhang here. And then simply to find out your tread cut, all you have to do is take off the overhang, minus the overhang, off of your 11 and a quarter tread finish distance. And it's simply, the calculation simply ends up being a 10 and a half inch tread cut. Now, don't worry if your overhang is a half inch or five eighths or three quarter. You're still going to have an overhang. I always like to use a 10 and a half inch tread cut when I'm doing five quarter by four cedar decking. Okay, now it's time to go over to the cut station and start laying out our stair stringers. The first thing that we're going to want to do is take our framing square. These are little clamps that are, go on to the side of your framing square. I just call them stops. And in this case, I've clamped one at 10 and a half inches for our tread cut, and I've clamped one at 6 and 11 sixteenths for our riser cut. This is a great way to lay out your stringers because you don't have to know any degrees or angles or anything like that. Now remember, we've got four risers and three treads. So we're going to start numbering them as we lay them out. And I mark the first one 
number one. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna lay out this stop here with this line where it intersects the edge of the board and lay out your next riser and your next tread. Okay, we just finished laying out our stair stringer. I'm gonna put my square over here. And the next thing we're gonna do is cut the bottom of the stringer, which is the seat cut. We're gonna to cut the top of the stringer, which is the cheek cut with my skill saw here. And I like to use a 40 tooth finish blade in my skill saw because it makes a really nice finish cut on this pressure treated material. Now the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is draw a reference line on our deck in order to test this. We know that our first riser cut is at 11, 6 and 11 sixteenths. So we're gonna to want to measure down from framing surface to framing surface to 6 and 11 sixteenths on either side of where our stringers are gonna go. Okay? And then we're gonna to wanna to draw a line now we're doing 6 and 11 sixteenths off of the framing because we're going from framing to framing. This is a framing piece, this is a framing piece. That's going to give us our height that we need. Don't make the mistake of taking a measurement off of your finish because that's where your, your finished decking height is going to be on your stair. So now that we have a line here, we're going to take it in. And I just, just, this is just a test, remember, and I kind of just angle this off of our patio. And what I'm seeing here is that our line here for our top tread is about an inch higher than our framing. That's because we haven't cut the thickness of our uh, treads off the bottom of the stringer. This is why it's very important that you cut that thickness off the bottom to drop this down where it needs to be. Okay, so then now that we have verified that our pattern is lining up, everything looks good, it's time to do the final cutout. By the way, uh, what I like to do is I like to mark my pattern piece. I just put pad on there. And the reason why I do that is because this becomes your piece to lay out every other stringer in your set of stairs. So let's go back and take a look at this and see what this looks like. The last thing that we want to talk about now before we do assembly is uh, how we're going to tie all of these stringers together. What I like to do <clears throat> is I like to cut a little keyway down at the bottom of my stringer so that I can have a nice little plate that I'll secure into the deck which actually hold everything together. So we're going to do that next. Always use the same pattern piece to mark out all the rest of your stringers. That way everything is very consistent. I like to uh, trim out the sides of my stairs with a three quarter inch piece of cedar fascia and now is a good time to mark those out because once it's marked out, once these are uh, stringers are installed, you're not going to have any way to mark out your fascia pieces. So now is the time to do that. Okay, so we have all of our stringers cut, as you can see right here. This is our pile, and they all look really nicely matched together. The next thing we're going to want to do is installation, but what I like to do on my two outside stringers, I like to put them together as what's called a doubler. And so I have two here that are going to go together. And I'm going to screw those together before I do my installation. So I'm going to set these aside over here for a second. And it's easier to screw these together first before I do my installation. 
And so simply, what I like to do is simply just line up my cuts, line up all my lines, and they should line up really well because you use the same uh, pattern piece to put these together. And I simply like to use outdoor screws. So I mold these together as a doubler before I do my installation just so that those are together. So that's the first one. I'll do another one and then it'll be time to go over to the deck and do the installation. Okay, now we're installing our stringers and you can see I've got the doubler on that side installed. I'm installing the doubler on this side. Lining the stringers up with our line and of course it helps to make sure that everything is nice and square. Yes, it is. And simply start installing our toenailed screws into our deck ledger, which is down there, and our deck rim out here. You also will notice that we've put in our layout already. So simply, we're just putting all of these components together tighten that up together and toenail screw down into here each stringer will go through the same process so the next one goes in like so line it up with the layout and the line see how nicely everything's fitting together this goes back to your drawing this is why we spend so much time putting together a drawing and doing our calculations so that when it comes time to do installation, everything fits together. One of the things you're going to have to put in, and it's nice to cut before you put your stringers in, is what I like to call a strong back, which goes in and fits in like that. So on my long runs where I have a lot of deflection, we just add that to the side of our stringers before installation. Even though we don't need it here on these, it's something to think about when you're doing a longer run. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is square up our stringers. We're gonna attach them to the patio, and that'll be it for framing our stair stringers. It's really important to practice, to really make it important enough in your craft to, to practice it through. Because some of the main mistakes that I've seen made are, are, are simple. They're just, it, as if you have your drawing done, if you've taken your time to do your measurements, and taken your time to understand the calculations, which are really are not complicated at all, then there's no reason to make those mistakes.